here is another session from the series Defense Against Dark Act. We are focusing on developing the knowledge, the awareness, the mental readiness to prepare our own protection shields from these frauds and intruders. In this particular session, we'll be learning how to validate an URL, the links and the short links that are sent to us, how to deal with those safely. While you are accessing an URL from the browser, did you notice this uh, icon here near the, uh, the URL field? This icon in, in this particular browser for Google Chrome, it denotes that the connection is secure. Now, if you look at the URL, complete URL, you will also notice that there is an S at the end of HTTP. This S stands for secure. So the, the, the icon, the URL, the S after HTTP, all of it denotes that this particular URL is secured through a mechanism that is accepted and understood globally by the browser, and it is uh, validated from a global certification agency. Now, what happens if it's a different browser? Well, the methodology is still the same, just the icon is different. So you see, there is a lock icon here. This lock icon is what you see in Microsoft Edge browser, but it's still the same. This lock icon signifies that the connection is secure. If you look at the full URL, you will see the same S at the end of HTTP. Now, what happens when the connection is not secured and potentially unsafe? In Google Chrome, you see this particular icon, right? This, this is, if you click on it, you will find this message as well there. Your connection to this site is not secure, right? And for Microsoft Edge also, you will see a similar icon there, and it will also display the similar message, the connection to this site is not secure. Now, if you are trying to deal with a site which is not secure, which is not, uh, you know, working on top of HTTPS, then uh, it's potentially unsafe. You will have to take a call um, as per your knowledge, whether you will actually go ahead with that potentially unsafe site or not. Now, what happens if the situation is not as transparent as the previous examples. What if we have received some URLs that looks like these? Uh, some sort of short URL, .at, with some random characters, right? How do you find that these URLs are safe or not? Okay, first of all, you can still follow the same, you know, uh, the methodology that we just talked about. Look at the HTTP and uh, the the beginning part of the URL. Uh, does it say it is HTTP or does it say it is HTTPS? If it is HTTPS, the chances are that this particular URL is going to be safe. Now, beyond that, you must also know that there are reliable URL expander sites or apps. For example, I'm using uh, expandurl.net website. And if I uh, provide this URL, uh, this link, the short link that I have received, if I uh, you know, put it here, and if I uh, try to get the expanded version from this website, it gives me the version that, okay, this shortened URL is actually uh, a kind of a you know, um, URL that belongs to google.com itself. So now by looking at the expanded URL, I can make out in a more, clear way whether this short URL is of my interest or not. And now this is where you are, you know, uh, you're, you're looking at the URL and you're, uh, you know, figuring out whether this URL is of your uh, interest or not. But even that format of the URL, sometimes 
manipulated in a way by the fraudsters that it creates a certain level of deception that you know uh, many of the users fail to notice now it's important that you know what those deceptions could be like for example if you uh, look at the way the domain names were you know typically allowed the policy that is um, you know maintained across the internet uh, all across the world is that all letters from a to z all numbers from 0 to 9 and a hyphen is allowed and the domain name must consist at least two or maximum 63 characters and in addition to that the domain names can contain the following special characters now here this becomes a little bit tricky uh, because in many of these languages international languages these characters are used because those characters belong to those languages however when uh, a fraudster is trying to deceive you into believing that uh, you know particular url is legitimate they would typically play with these characters like for example you may think this www.yourbank.com is same as this if you fail to notice there is a slight curly um, cap on top of the you know character o or if you fail to notice that there is another cap on top of o here or it could be something different here if you are not being able to notice it or this double dot here it could be something on any of these letters could be o could be u could be a because a lot of these special characters are allowed as part of the domain name so there could be a malicious website that has been developed to you know um, to make people believe that you're accessing your trusted banking site www.yourbank.com for example but essentially just because of that one different character you might be landing on two of you know a fraud site and that fraud site might try and mimic the exact behavior that this trusted site shows and it will try to you know get your data information uh, login credentials, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, you know, maliciously hacked. So now you will have to notice these, you know, these variations. You'll have to be observant about it, and only if you are observant, you will uh, not uh, get caught into these deceptions. This is kind of a, you know, holistic idea of how can understand the urls how you can understand the links and the short links and how you can fail safe yourself from these deception techniques that fraudsters use to make you believe a certain url is trustworthy now we'll close it here for now but there's going to be more recommendations and suggestions that will be published here keep watching thank you